Well, it's mid-April, the wheat's coming up, and this is about the time we're starting to look at insects. So Tom, what's the insect pressure look like so far in Oklahoma? We're starting to see the presence of uh, bird cherry oat aphids, and they typically come on this time of the year. Um, they're not in such high numbers everywhere that I, I'm that concerned about it, but it's always good for producers to, to watch for them because they can build up rapidly once we start getting warmer temperatures. And, uh, and then I have got some samples in like last week of uh, some heads that had already emerged and they were loaded with English grain aphids, which is kind of unusual for Oklahoma. They're usually uh, in, in other places, but this might be a year where they're doing well. They typically get uh, parasitized quite a bit, so we don't ever see them really build up in the heads, but, but the heads that I got samples of, they, they were loaded with them, so. So in regards to, you know, scouting fields for, for both of those aphids, you know, right now, not a lot of heads are starting to come up quite yet, but for the other type of aphids, what's the, you know, kind of scouting method that producers should look at? Well, for English grain aphid, you'd just be looking at heads. I'd take random heads. Um, uh, the only threshold I've been able to find was out of Kentucky. We don't really have a threshold here, but in Kentucky, they say if, they're, if you find heads averaging about 25 English grain aphids per head, um, that uh, they suggest treating. And like I said, we don't have a threshold here because we just don't encounter them that often, but that might be a guide to go by. If, if I was to rub my, uh, my hand over uh, wheat like that and it got sticky, you got too many aphids and you need to do something about it for sure. And uh, we actually have some thresholds that uh, are based upon the cost of control and how many aphids you have, but, but uh, a lot of times they build up so quickly that that's what people, they'll say, man, I start, I start having wheat that was sticky. And it's like, well, that's the honeydew that they're producing. There's a lot of aphids in your field if that's sticky like that. So as we go, you know, forward, um, and the wheat starts to you know progress and the heads start to come up that's when producers are starting to be concerned with with army worms what uh, do you have any news on the army worm front nothing right now um we we'll see them we'll see them start building up now but they really um they're usually a problem by the uh, after the the wheat's headed up and the heads have emerged and they'll start feeding on the uh, the awns and in the head it, um, itself and uh we have a threshold of about four to five per linear foot. If you see that many, that's probably a good idea to treat for them. But, uh, and, and we'll typically find them more in, in wheat that's, like the farmer's done a really good job with fertilizer, the, the wheat's really healthy and doing well. That's the, the kind of wheat that they prefer. Um, and they also prefer if the wheat gets laid down at all from a wind, um, they'll, you'll a lot of times find a lot of army worms in areas like that too, so. All right, thanks Tom. Tom Royer, extension entomologist here with Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like some information on controlling aphids and army worms in your field, go to sunup.okstate.edu.